Our cover story tonight is from Afghanistan. In an ideal situation, we should be discussing the peace deal negotiations. But amid these peace talks, the people of Afghanistan are suffering terror attacks, attacks by the very people who are talking peace. On Thursday, the Taliban attacked the police headquarters in the city of Kandahar. Reports say that the terrorists detonated a car bomb at the gate. After the blasts, they opened fire on the policemen. And this triggered a gun battle between the terrorists and the security officials. Local journalists captured this fighting on camera. The attack was on the counter narcotics wing inside the police headquarters. Members of the security forces suffered the maximum injuries here. The Taliban then issued a statement. It said that some of their fighters entered police stations. Two Taliban attackers blew themselves up. Six others were shot dead by the security forces. Kandahar, remember, is the former seat of the Taliban, a headquarters of sorts, a very important city for them. The Taliban ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001. After that, they were removed by the American-led coalition. And since 2001, the Taliban have been fighting. The Americans launched a war on terror. The Taliban is fighting it on the other side. They've been attacking the American forces and their allies. They want all foreign troops to leave Afghanistan. A report by an Afghan news channel says the attack in Kandahar was plotted in Pakistan. Of course, Islamabad denies this report, calling it baseless. Earlier this week, it was reported that Pakistan is working alongside America, Russia and China to craft a peace agreement. So Pakistan basically is playing on both the teams. And that's nothing new. Pakistan is backing the Taliban. It has been doing it for many years now. And Pakistan is also sitting with the Americans on the peace talks. It's a bit warped, yes. Considering all these facts, can Pakistan really play a constructive role in this peace process? We believe it can only compromise an already dodgy exercise, a peace negotiation minus the Afghan government. Meanwhile, violence continues to rise. Afghanistan suffered another bomb attack today. This was a blast near the Afghan University in Kabul. Eight people died in this attack. More than 30 people were injured. A second bomb was found near the explosion site, but the police defused it. No one has taken responsibility for this attack, but it comes less than 24 hours after the Taliban attack in Kandahar. The series of assaults has come during the peace talks between America and the Taliban. Both sides claim that they are making progress, but so far there has been no progress, no reduction in the violence in Afghanistan. This dialogue has been on for almost a year and it has been dragging. There is no deal in sight. All sides are suffering losses. According to the New York Times, as many as 92 members of the pro-government forces and 45 civilians were killed this week alone. That's the kind of casualty figures we're talking about. This latest wave of attacks comes after the intra-Afghan talks in Doha. Dozens of high-profile Afghan politicians and civil society activists met with representatives of the Taliban in Qatar earlier this month. After those talks, both the sides said that they sh there should be no civilian casualties. Clearly, that is not happening. 